Hello learners, I am Siba. We are moving to lesson 4, Accounting for Business Transactions. In this session, we can study the rules for accounting, basis of accounting and double entry mechanism. In double entry accounting system, both the aspects of a transaction are recorded. Every transaction has two aspects according to double entry system. Both the aspects are recorded also. While recording each transaction, total amount debited must be equal to the total amount credited. Debit means the transaction is to be recorded on the left hand side. Credit indicates transaction is to be recorded on the right hand side of the account. What will be the format of the account? We should know that. We have a T formatted account. Left hand side is called debit and abbreviated as capital D, small r and a dot. And right hand side, you will indicate that as CR, capital C, small r. That means it is the credit side. Rules of accounting. In every account, we have a debit side on the left hand side and a credit side on the right hand side. In the T formatted account, title of the account will be written on the top of that. We have already studied classification of accounts. Still, I am going to repeat it. We have different types of accounts like assets, capital, liability, revenue or gains, expenses or losses. I am going to mention modern rules of accounting one by one. Increase in asset is debited and decrease in asset is credited. Increase in expenses or losses is debited and decrease in expenses or losses is credited. When we are discussing about liabilities, this is the rule. Increase in liabilities is credited and decrease in liabilities is debited. Increase in capital is credited. Decrease in capital is debited. Increase in revenue is credited. Decrease in revenue is debited. Either revenue or gains. When it is increased, it is credited. Either gain or revenue. When it is decreased, it is debited. So, when you look into this slide, you can easily identify asset. When it is increased, it is debited. When it is decreased, it is credited. Liabilities. When it is increased, it is credited. When it is decreased, it is debited. Capital. When increased, credited. When there is a decrease, it is debited. Expenses. When there is an increase, it is debited. Expense. When there is a decrease, it is credited. Income or revenue. When there is an increase, it is credited. When it is a decrease, it is debited. Now, you are thorough with the rules of accounting. Now, moving to different transactions. In order to Analyze the rule. First transaction, Rohan purchased furniture for rupees 80,000. Asset is coming inside the business. So, the name of the asset will be the one aspect and when asset is coming inside, cash is going outside. So, two affected accounts are cash account and furniture account. Cash is going from the business, so there is a decrease in the asset. Rule for asset account, when it is decreased, it is credited. So, cash account is credited and furniture account is debited. Rule for asset account, when it is increased, it is debited. So, furniture account is debited with the amount that is given in the transaction. So, furniture account debited and cash account is credited. Another transaction, 
two affected accounts are Missionary Account and Messrs Indian Missionary Mart. Missionary being an asset, it is increased. So, Missionary Account is debited. Messrs Indian Missionary Mart, Creditor, Liability increases, Rule for Liability. When it is increased, it is credited. Messrs Indian Missionary Mart is credited. And in this transaction, Missionary Account is debited. Rule for Asset, Increase in Asset debited. So, Missionary Account is debited. So, Missionary Account debited and Messrs Indian Missionary Mart credited with the amount that is given in the transaction. Cash of rupees 50,000 introduced in business as capital by Takesh. This is another transaction. Cash being an asset is increased. Rule for asset account, asset when increased it is debited. Capital is coming inside the business. Rule for capital account, when it is increased it is credited. So capital account is credited. Rakesh's capital account is credited. And cash account is debited in this transaction. Why we are debiting cash account? Because the rule for asset. Cash is an asset and rule for asset account. Asset when increased it is debited. So cash account debit to capital. Or cash account debited and capital account credited. We can analyze another transaction. Paid rupees 6000 to the employees as salary. When anything is paid what is going from the business? Cash is going from the business. So, salary being an expense, it is debited and cash being an asset, it is credited. What is the rule for expense account? When there is an increase in expense, it is debited. So, as an expense, salary is increasing, so salary account is debited. And cash being an asset, it is decreased. So, it is credited. So, in this transaction, two affected accounts are salary and cash. Salary, debit and cash, credit. Another transaction, received interest for the month rupees 4000. When interest is received, cash is coming inside the business. Cash being an asset, rule for asset, debit when it is increased, credit when it is decreased. So, cash is increasing, so debited. Interest is a revenue for this business. Interest received, income, revenue. Rule for revenue, revenue when increased, it is credited. So, affected accounts are cash account and interest account. Cash account will be debited. Asset increase will be debited. So, cash account will be debited and interest account will be credited. From the following transactions, state the title of accounts to be affected and types of accounts and the account to be debited and the account to be credited. Ankur started business with cash rupees 6 lakh. The affected accounts are cash account and capital account. Cash is an asset account. Capital can be included in the capital account. Rule for asset account, when it is increased, it is debited. So, cash is increased and it is debited. Capital, rule for capital account, when it is increased, it is credited. So, cash and capital are the affected accounts and cash is debited and capital account is credited. Second transaction, purchase goods for cash. Rupees 80,000. Name of the accounts that are affected, purchases account and cash account. Purchases is an expense and cash being an asset. Purchases is an expense and cash is an asset. Purchases being an expense, its rule is when expense is increased, it is debited. So, purchases account is debited. Cash being an asset is going from the business. When goods are purchased, so cash is decreasing, rule for asset account, when asset is decreasing, it will be credited. 
So, purchases account will be debited and cash account will be credited. Paid salaries, rupees 10,000. Which are the affected accounts? Salary account and cash account. Salary account can be included under expense. Rule for expense account, when it is increased, it is debited. So, salary account is debited. Cash can be included under asset account. Here cash is going from the business. So, cash is decreasing or asset is decreasing. When asset is increasing, it is debited. When asset is decreasing, it is credited. So, cash is credited. Salary account debited and cash credited. Sold goods to Rohit on credit. Credit transaction. Debtor increases. Rohit is a debtor. Debtor can be included under asset account. When asset increases, it will be debited. So, Rohit's account is debited. Sales. Revenue for the business. It can be included in revenue account. So, when revenue increases, it will be credited. So, sales account is credited. Rohit, debit, sales, credit. Another transaction, office machine purchase for cash. Office machine being an asset, it is an aspect and cash is the other aspect. Office machine is an asset, rule for asset account. When asset is increased, it is debited. So, office machine is debited. And cash is going from the business, asset is decreasing, so cash account is credited. Office machine account debited, cash account credited. Took loan from bank, rupees 30,000. Loan is taking means cash is coming inside the business. Cash and bank loan are the affected accounts. Cash is an asset. Rule for asset account, when it is increased, it is debited. So cash account is debited. Bank loan being a liability, it is increased. Rule for liability, when it is increased, it is credited. When it is decreased, it is debited. So cash account and bank loan account are the affected accounts and cash account is debited and bank loan account is credited. Received commission. Cash is coming inside the business in the form of commission. So cash and commission are the affected accounts. Cash is an asset. Asset is increasing. Rule for asset account, when asset is increasing, it is debited. So, cash account is debited. Commission, being a revenue for the business. Rule for revenue account, when it is increased, it is credited. When it is decreased, it is debited. So, commission account is increased. So, it is credited. Cash account debit, commission account credit. Postage paid, rupees 500. Postage being an expense, you can include either under the head postage or as printing and stationary account. Cash is going from the business when it is paid. So, cash is an asset account. So, postage expenses increases. When expense increases, it will be debited. Cash being an asset, it is decreasing in this transaction. So, it is credited. So, postage debit, cash credit. Paid rent. Rent is an expense and cash is going from the business. Expense increases, it will be debited. So, rent account is debited. Cash is an asset and it is decreasing. So, it is credited. Rent account debit, cash account credit. Received cash from Rohit. Cash being an asset, it is debited. And Rohit is the debtor, it is decreasing. Asset is decreasing. Cash as an asset increasing, so it is debited. Rohit, debtor, as an asset, it is decreasing, so it is credited. Why? The rule for asset account is increase in asset is debited and decrease in asset is credited. So, cash account debit to Rohit. We can have a look at basis of accounting. We have cash basis of accounting, accrual basis of accounting and hybrid basis of accounting. Cash basis of accounting is a system in which accounting entries are recorded only when cash is received or cash is paid. Revenue is recognized only on receipt of cash in cash basis of accounting. 
Expenses are recorded as incurred when they are paid in cash basis of accounting. The difference between the total revenues and total expenses can be profit or loss of an enterprise for a particular accounting period. Under cash basis of accounting, we will not consider for accounting purpose outstanding expenses, income received in advance, accrued incomes, prepaid expenses, etc. Advantages of cash basis of accounting, it is very simple as no adjustment entries are required. It appears more objective as very few estimates and personal judgments are required. And it is more suitable to those entities which have most of the transactions on cash basis. But this system has certain disadvantages like it does not give a true and fair view of profit or loss as well as the financial position of the business as it ignores outstanding expenses, prepaid expenses, etc. And here in cash basis of accounting, it is not following the matching concept of accounting. Here is a question to find out the income according to the cash basis of accounting. During the financial year 2013-14, Ram had cash sales of rupees 5 lakh 80 thousand, credit sales of rupees 2 lakh 65 thousand. His expenses of the year were rupees 4 lakh 60 thousand, out of which 60 thousand are still to be paid. So, whatever is paid and whatever is received only will be considered in cash basis of accounting and find out Ram's income for the year 2013-14 following the cash basis of accounting. Revenue, whatever cash is flowing inside is 5,80,000. Expenses will be deducted from the revenue, 4,60,000 expenses are there but we have not paid 60,000. So, what we have paid is only 4 lakh. So, expenses came to 4 lakh. Revenue 5 lakh 80 thousand. That is because of the sales 5 lakh 80 thousand is coming inside the business. Expenses 4 lakh. Net income is revenue minus expense 5 lakh 80 thousand minus 4 lakh give you 1 lakh 80 thousand. Here, Credit sales and outstanding expenses are not considered. So, the net income came to rupees 1,80,000 under cash basis of accounting. Next type, accrual basis of accounting. Here, revenue and expense are taken into consideration for the purpose of income determination on the basis of accounting period to which they relate. Outstanding expenses are those expenses which have become due during the accounting period but which have not yet been paid off. Prepaid expenses are those expenses which have been paid in advance. And accrued income means income which has been earned by the business during that particular accounting period but has not yet become due for payment and therefore has not yet been received. Income due but not received that is accrued income. Income received in advance that is income which has been received by the business before being earned. In accrual basis of accounting we have certain advantages that is it is based on all business transactions of the year and discloses correct profit or loss. This method is used in all types of business units. It is a scientific method and it has rationality in its application. As disadvantage, I should say, it is not a simple one. And we have to use estimates and personal judgment in this. It fails to disclose the actual cash flows.
During the financial year 2013-14, Ram had cash sales of rupees 5 lakh 80 thousand and credit sales of rupees 2 lakh 65 thousand. His expenses were rupees 4 lakh 60 thousand, out of which 60 thousand are still to be paid. Find out Ram's income for the year 2013-14 following the accrual basis of accounting. Here, total sales includes cash sales and credit sales. 5 lakh 80 thousand plus 2 lakh 65 thousand. That is 8 lakh 45 thousand. Expenses include the outstanding expenses also. So it came to 4 lakh 60 thousand. Revenue minus expense will give you net income that is 3 lakh 85 thousand. Outstanding expenses of 60 thousand rupees relate to this accounting year. Hence, are to be charged to the revenue of current year. Credit sales of rupees 2 lakh 65 thousand are considered for this year as the transaction took place during this current year. Let us have a look at the difference between accrual basis of accounting and cash basis of accounting. When we are considering the prepaid expenses or outstanding items, or expense or income received in advance. We should say, in accrual basis of accounting, they are not considering for accounting purpose outstanding expenses, accrued income, income received in advance, etc. in the balance sheet. Next basis of difference, effect on income of prepaid expenses and accrued income. Income statement will show higher income if there are items of prepaid expenses and accrued income in accrual basis of accounting. In cash basis of accounting, income statement will show lower income if there are items of prepaid expenses and accrued income. Another basis, effect of outstanding expenses and unearned income. In accrual basis of accounting, income statement will show a lower income if there are items of outstanding expenses and unearned income. Income statement when prepared on the basis of cash basis of accounting will show a higher income if there are items of outstanding expense and unearned income. When legal position is considered as a basis, Companies Act 1956 recognizes accrual basis of accounting. Companies Act 1956 does not recognize Cash basis of accounting, option regarding valuation of inventories and methods of depreciation are considered. When it is considered as a basis, we have to say, in accrual basis of accounting, inventories can be valued at cost price or market price, whichever is less. And in the valuation of depreciation, different methods like straight line method and diminishing balance method can be used. No such option is available in regard to inventory valuation and method of depreciation calculation. When reliability is considered as a basis, accrual basis of accounting is reliable as it records all cash and credit transactions. It helps to ascertain true profit or true position of the loss. Cash basis of accounting is not a reliable basis of accounting because only cash transactions are recorded and it fails to ascertain true profit or loss. When users are considered as a basis, a business unit with a profit motive ascertains its profit or loss as per accrual basis. Professional people, small ventures of temporary nature, some not-for-profit organizations etc. ascertain their profit or loss as per cash basis of accounting. There is one more basis of accounting that is hybrid basis of accounting. An accounting system which is a combination of both cash and accrual basis is in use that is the hybrid basis of accounting. Here we should know one more term double entry mechanism or double entry system. To record every transaction one account is debited and other is credited. This is based on the principle every debit has a credit. In double entry system, to record every transaction, one account is debited and the other is credited. This is based on the principle every debit has a credit. 
So, in double entry mechanism, to record every transaction, one account is debited and the other account is credited. This is based on the principle, every debit has a credit. Double entry bookkeeping seeks to record every transaction in money or money's worth in its dual aspect. Advantages of double entry mechanism is systematic record. Complete record of the transaction is possible with the help of double entry system. And we can record everything in an accurate manner. Operational results can be ascertained very fast with the help of double entry mechanism. If you want to ascertain how much purchases have occurred in this month, it is so easy to find it with the help of double entry system. Same is the case with cash position. If you want to ascertain how much cash is available with the organization, how much sales have occurred in the last month or in the last year, this is easily possible only with the help of double entry mechanism. Financial position can also be expressed in a better manner in double entry mechanism. That is, how much assets are there with the business, what are the liabilities of the business that can be easily ascertained with this system of recording. And the possibility of fraudulent nature or fraudulent aspects inside the business can be controlled up to some extent with the help of double entry mechanism. So, in this session, we have identified mainly the rules for accounting, basis of accounting and double entry mechanism. Hope you have understood. Thank you. प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम उठे और जागे हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास प्रतिभा है उन्हें अवसर चाहिए NIOS देता रहा है युवाओं को अवसर आगे बढ़ने का NIOS से पढ़ने वाले इन युवाओं ने किया है संस्थान को गौरवान्वित दिव्यांगों ने बनके दिखाया है सबल और आत्मनिर्भर NIOS के साथ आप भी जुड़िए NIOS के संग